Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Assessor Reform Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Monday morning devotion time. And as the Lord blesses this time, we go to the Word of God from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 today. We're going to be looking at the first five verses of 1 Corinthians 14. Now, as we have opportunity to be in the scriptures, it is wise of us to begin that time with prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for the glory you give unto us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember the blessings that we have received due to his grace, now we pray that you would encourage us through the Bible and that we might better understand your testimony and we might live in light of who you are, what you have done, and what you will do for us. May we be at peace. May we be content. And dear God, most of all, may we love the Lord Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, strength, and body. And in his name we pray. Amen. So this morning, we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, beginning there at verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Now, as surprising as this might sound, this is important. Chapter 14 follows chapter 13. Chapter 13, the great chapter of love, had reminded us and everyone else that the most important of all of the virtues, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Now, when we talked about love last week, we were reminded that love at its base means sacrifice. When Jesus says the greatest love that a man can have for another is to lay down his life for him, that is a picture for what we are talking about this morning. When we desire to serve in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do so out of love for God and love for neighbor. And so as Paul is dealing with the abuse of spiritual gifts in Corinth, he wants to remind them of what is most important, and that's prophecy. Now, we always have to define what that word prophecy means. We do not mean by it new revelation from heaven. The canon is closed. None of us are an apostle. None of us have received direct revelation from Jesus Christ. So it's not talk about the future or even a word of admonition to the people of God. Anybody who tells you that they receive prophecy in this sense is a false prophet. So having taken care of that, what does prophecy mean? Well, prophecy can mean a couple of different things. One, it can mean the proclamation of the revealed will of God. It can be referred to as preaching. In a sense, that's what I do every Lord's Day morning and evening when I stand in the pulpit and declare God's word. I am prophesying to those gathered before me. And so in that sense... Prophecy is the greatest of these spiritual gifts because it's in the preaching of the word that men come to faith in Jesus Christ. Now, part of that, of course, is not everybody is called to prophesy in the sense of preaching. We see in the New Testament that there are requirements for a preacher. One, that he be a godly man, that he be a man that he be the husband of one wife. Now, that doesn't mean single men can't be preachers. It just means that you can't be married to more than one woman. And we have those lists in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. And as you consider those lists, and especially how Paul is laying them out here in 1 Corinthians 14, 
we are being told to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially I prophesy. <clears throat> now, not everybody can prophesy in the sense of being a preacher, but every Christian prophesies when they speak the truth of God. Now, sometimes that truth is spoken through singing. When we hear, for instance, in Joel chapter 2 of the sons and daughters prophesying, we are meant to hear that in the language of praising. Joel 2 is not contradicting 1 Timothy 3. That's what Paul Peter means when he quotes that verse in the book of Acts in his sermons. He's speaking of the way that the children, the sons and daughters, will prophesy, proclaim, and testify to the work of God in his son, Jesus Christ. And so that is the primary spiritual gift every Christian should desire, to preach for some, to praise for all. You can't say that you believe and praise God when you stand with your hands in your pocket in uh, the worship of Jesus Christ. Paul would uh, certainly uh, say that that is out of accord with his teaching here at the beginning of 1 Corinthians 14. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Now, speaking in tongues had a role and a place in the early church. We believe in the ARP, at Bethany ARP especially, that those tongues have ceased, and we'll get more into that as the chapter unfolds. But the primary focus here is not on speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues, again, has its place. However, what should we desire? That all men might be edified through that work. And speaking in tongues is only for a few, those who can speak the mysteries. But prophecy is for all men. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. And what word do men need to hear? That Jesus Christ is dead for sinners. That Jesus Christ was raised from the dead on the third day. That Jesus Christ has washed you in his blood. That Jesus Christ has given you life eternal. That's what every man needs to hear. That is what edifying speech looks like. And those are the actual words of comfort that every man needs to hear. I wish you all spoke with tongues. But even more that you prophesied, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Again, this is another uh, application that's worth considering as we close out this morning, is this idea of corporate edification. You see, the worship of Jesus Christ is a benefit to everybody who is present. And it's hard to benefit from worship if you ain't there. But even more so, there is a building up in faith of the whole body when we are engaged in prophesying together, praising the name of Jesus Christ, proclaiming his goodness to the world, testifying to the gospel of the forgiveness of sin, of the gift of grace, of mercy, and of love. And so as we continue to look through chapter 14 over the next several weeks, again, we're going to hear more from Paul about why it's so important that we seek the greater things in this life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Take care and God bless.